It's kind of crazy that we have three out of the seven nations in the game already. In just under a year, Mahoyo has released the first three regions of Genshin Impact. You know, Mondstadt, Liyue and Inazuma. And let's not forget about Dragonspine and the Golden Apple Archipelago. Now, in a conference, one of the CEOs of Mihoyo, Kai Haoya, shown off that they actually have a four-year plan or roadmap for the game, meaning that if all goes to plan, we're actually going to see every nation in the game over the next four years. There was actually a little bit of discussion that because of Genshin's huge success, has been more successful than Mahoyo ever anticipated, that they actually might do a 10 year roadmap instead, but um, I've seen no real solid evidence to confirm this claim yet. Anyway, I wanted to watch the conference from GDC, but the only place I could find it to watch it was by paying $550 for a membership to the GDC vault. Boo! Boo! Okay, so we can watch that. But if you do want to view the slides from the conference, you can check them out on Famitsu's website. I'll put a link in the description. And you might also be interested in a different conference from Shuo Shu titled uh, Building a Scalable AI System. This actually had some interesting slides about the AI of Genshin Impact. For example, here's how they set up a Pyro Slime's animations within the Unity game engine. Anyway, that's besides the point. So the exciting thing about this roadmap is that it's shown us when they expect to release the four other nations. Here we go, in 2022, we're gonna see Sumeru, which is the Dendro nation. And that aesthetic and area is going to be based on the Middle East or Southeast Asia. In 2023, we'll see Fontaine, the Hydro Nation, and it's going to be based off of France. 2024 is going to be Natlan, the Pyro Nation, and that's going to have an Aztec or Native American theme to it. And 2025, we'll finally be able to set foot in Sneznaya, the Cryo Nation, which will be based off of Russia. So I think, obviously, most people are going to be most excited for the fact that we're going to be going to Sumeru. We're finally going to be able to see what the Dendro Nation are like, and also we'll be able to finally see Dendro characters in the game. And I just want to think, I wonder what their resonance will be. For example, the Pyro Resonance, if you put two Pyro characters on your team, you get an increase in attack by 25%. With Hydro, you get a, a boost to your healing ability. And with Geos, it's all about the shield strength. I wonder, you know, what Dendro's sort of strength is going to be within the game. Perhaps it's going to be something, hmm, maybe about crowd control or rooting the enemies. Or perhaps it will be some sort of poison or an elemental resistance or physical resistance shredding res resonance. That might be interesting as well. Sumeru being next as the Dendro Nation is also, you know, exciting but also really curious. I mean, the fact that we haven't had a, a single Dendro character, it's been completely ignored as an element in the game so far. It's just very strange that it's actually going to be next. I mean, we have some Dendro enemies. I mean, there's the Dendro slime. Uh, might be something else I'm forgetting about. But I mean, that's the only interaction we've ever had with Dendro. But it's funny, in a year from now, we're going to be in the Dendro nation and we're going to be playing with Dendro characters. I think, in a way, the fact that Dendro wasn't in the game from launch has actually made the excitement for this nation a lot bigger, you know? It sucks that Dendro isn't in the game yet, uh, but it's keeping me excited, if you know what I mean. So, if we have another four years worth of content and we're going to be going to all the other nations of Tevat, then we're going to obviously see a lot more events as well. I mean, throughout the game so far, there's been roughly over 50 events, you know, big and small ones. Over the last year, you know, we've had things like Unreconciled Stars to Theater Mechanicus. So if this is going to go on for another four years, uh, we can expect to see like another 200 events over that period, which sounds a bit crazy. The only thing I'm worried about, though, is the rehashing and reusing of old content. Like, for example, the Lost Riches Sealy event has returned, and so has recently the Theater Mechanicus event. And that's not really too bad, because these two events have come with some slight changes and improvements to keep them fresh, but it does make me a little bit worried, because I don't want to play virtually the same events for the next four years. I'm just starting to wonder if it would be better if Mahoyo shifts their team around to focus on more content such as Dragonspine and the Golden Apple Archipelago rather than small minigames. 
but I still have fun with these minigames regardless. At the end of the day, it's very nice to know that there's a plan in place, and I think it does have a reasonable time frame as well. If I didn't know of anything about Mahoyo or Genshin Impact, I'd say hey, that's a lot of content to release in, in such a short amount of time, but man, we've seen the Mahoyo are absolutely kings at just pumping out content all the time, dude. So I'd say yeah, totally reasonable. I mean, it's possible things might end up delayed, and they might change their plans up as well, you never know. They might not stick to this, you know, one year nation plan. But uh, we'll have to see. Let me know what you guys think. Do you have any worries or concerns about the roadmap? Or do you think there's something Mahoyo could do that would be a little bit better? Let me know what you guys think.